All right. Patch 2.6, season three is around the corner. Some pretty spicy stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna read everything verbatim. You know, this ain't a bedtime story, I ain't grandma. Uh, but I'm gonna go through some stuff that's pretty exciting. Uh, let's get into it. Patch 2.6, uh, season three starts February 16th. Everyone should know this at this point. Um, you know, it's Thursday night. Uh, that's 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, if you're on Eastern Eastern Standard like me, that's 8 p.m. You know, write that down. Put that in. Uh, put that in your diary. You know, save that for later. Tell your friends. Hope you got a group ready for that. Um, eight new rune wards. They did give a few updates to some of the the new rune wards that they they currently released. Bulwark. Uh, no updates to Bulwark. It was good as it is. Um, it's a pretty decent rune ward. Probably gonna make one of these. You know, through my playthrough of uh you know season three maybe maybe i'll make one of these day one we'll see what happens cure this is actually this is actually pretty cool uh they added a level one cleansing aura when equipped and they also reduced poison length uh down from 75 percent to 50 percent you know that's not it's not that bad i mean you know a lot of people aren't even going to run poison length reduced you know regardless so if, if you think you're going to need this you know, maybe some kind of melee builds might need this. You know, maybe if you're going to Chaos Sanctuary, you know, Cleanse is, is pretty good there. What else? Maybe if you're going down to Neothok and you need Cleansing, you know, this is like a quick, cheap way to get Cleansing if you're not a Paladin. Um, I don't really see any any other use for this Rune Ward whatsoever. Ground, no changes to Ground. Huge Light Res stack, Light Zorb, pretty good as it is. Hearth. They added cannot be frozen. That's pretty good. That's, you know, pretty thematic with, you know, what's supposed to do. You get a nice, uh, nice boost to cold res, cold absorb. Um, a pretty, a pretty easy way to, to get cannot be frozen. I know that's pretty important for a lot of, a lot of, uh, melee, uh, base builds or, uh, you know, or if you're in Amazon, you need cannot be frozen. You know, you don't have, uh, you know, a rhyme shield yet. Um, if you don't have uh, Raven Frost yet, you know, this could be this could be a pretty good choice Otherwise, I really don't see any other reason to make this other than cannot be frozen temper No changes to temper, you know, huge fire as fire absorb pretty good if you're trying to run, you know, Trav Otherwise, you know, I don't, I don't really see any other reason to you know to use this Maybe, you know, throw on your mercenary, but bulwark would probably be one like one of the better uh, Helms to put on your mercenary out of, out of these sets hustle a uh, few changes to hustle in armor they changed faster run walk up to 65 percent which was originally 50 percent that's pretty good um see they increased attack speed in armor they buffed it up 20 percent so they went from 20 to 40 percent going to be a 40 percent ias buff initially you get the 20 faster hit recovery plus six to evade that's pretty interesting you're gonna get evade on pretty much any class with this with this as an armor you know that definitely is going to add to your defense um help out survivability um a lot of those a lot of those passive skills that the zon gets are, are pretty strong um and the good news is uh in 2.4 they actually removed the animation uh for that skill so it, it's not going to be it's not going to be messing you up uh, and then they added plus 10 all res, which is, you know, that, that's a pretty good stat. You know, you, you, you always like all res um, on your gear. In a weapon, 5% chance to cast level 1 uh, burst of speed on striking. That's down from level 9, but they also added a level 1 fanaticism aura. If you do the math, level 1 fanaticism, I believe, is about 14% IAS. And then level 1 burst of speed... I believe is 21 IAS, so that's about that's 35 increased attack speed. They upped the enhanced damage. The range is now 180 to 200 uh, percent. Previously 130 to 150. Um, I guess they they want you to actually use this as a weapon and not just uh, as a pre-buff weapon anymore. Because during the PTR, uh, we were seeing you know you would make a hustle, uh, you have hustle on swap, you get that burst of speed. Um, buff that pre-buff and then you'd swap to your you swap to your, your main weapon and you know start going ham with that i don't see this being meta at all um you know i mean most of these rune wards are pretty lackluster especially compared to 
the previous seasons where you got you know things like flickering flame and plague those were some pretty cool uh rune wards uh these are kind of, these are pretty these are pretty lackluster in my opinion mosaic some pretty cool changes to mosaic so now it's 50 percent chance for finishing moves to not consume charges which means now if you do wield mosaic claws that's going to give you a hundred percent chance to not consume charges right so that's pretty cool um whenever uh finisher is executed this way it now refreshes the expiration timer of the stack um that's a, a mechanic change if if you had your if you had charges uh, finishing charges you know tiger strike phoenix strike whatever and you didn't use them they would they would just go away um this is good though um now you know you're you're proccing you know those charges and it's refreshing the timer and you have a hundred percent chance to proc that so that that build is going to get you know pretty nutty um it's something i'm going to try out for sure um let's let's finish up mosaic um they added seven percent life steal um you know life steal is always good it's pretty hard to come by um when you're probably around level 53 and at that point you'll probably have to get it off maybe like some rare rings or belt you know if you're lucky if you find any uniques that have life steal on it they added uh elemental damage now so they took away the cold damage right and they added uh plus eight to 15 percent cold skill damage plus eight to 15 percent lightning skill damage and plus eight to 15 percent fire skill damage now what this is going to do is this is going to buff your finishing moves um you know so whether it's a fire whether it's lightning or, or cold um it's gonna it's gonna it's going to give a nice little a nice little buff in its damage which is pretty cool to help out uh this rune ward now the problem with this rune ward it's uh it's a mal and a gull right mal gull full normally if you find a mal rune you're going to want to save it for something uh like a grief and if you're playing in a group uh, you know usually when you're in a group everyone they'll, they'll combine their drops if you can make you know a grief you know day one or day two that's amazing that's just you know you know lucky you that's one step closer to just you know pummeling ubers and you know getting torches and farming torches if you're if you're totally into that the problem is definitely having a mal rune in there where it's a, a pretty significant rune to find early on and i don't know if i would waste it uh necessarily on a mosaic claw because also you'd you'd probably want to find a good base and chances are you're not going to find a good base uh for this you know the first 48 hours that, you know of the season metamorphosis now they did uh they did some changes to metamorphosis this is actually one of um probably the most hyped rune wards of season three um it is pretty cool they're adding a, a new mechanic where uh, uh you get a mark uh mark of the wolf and mark of the bear um, it's a new kind of passive mechanic that never existed in Diablo 2 before, so a lot of players are excited uh, to use this. Bonus attack rating, uh, uh, they changed it up to 30%. It originally was 20%, so now you get a 30% bonus attack rating. Now this is when you have Mark of the Wolf, right? So you have to be in werewolf form with this helmet on, and then when you're attacking enemies, you gain stacks, and then that would you know, give you Mark of the Wolf. And then uh, nothing changed necessarily for mark of the bear except for uh 25 percent uh chance of crushing blow is now uh just a universal stat on um on metamorphosis right you don't have to have a uh, mark of the bear to have that crushing blow so that's you know that's a really good uh buff for that rune ward you're always going to have that 25 percent chance crushing blow you know also uh when you're in your werewolf form and then you switch back to your bear, and then you're, you're, you're swapping back and forth. That's not something that you'll lose. Um, seven rune wards and handful of Haraja cube recipes were added in ladder season one. Now uh, they can be used in non-ladder online game modes. This is really cool. Uh, we no longer have to make our flickering flames and our you know plague claws or you know our plague swords or our Act Five marks um, on a ladder season and then wait. You know to bring it over to other characters in a non-ladder season uh you know they said they were going to do this early on when they release rune wards they're only going to be ladder rune wards and then eventually they're gonna you know be able to be made on non-ladder so you know now they've pushed that because they've introduced new rune wards for season three um this is pretty good um anyone who hasn't you know played ladder or you know didn't have a lot of time to to play a ladder season um they probably have you know more accumulated wealth on their non-ladder characters 
And so now they have a chance to, you know, to make some of these, these new, relatively new rune wards and, uh, and mess with those. Some of them are really good. Like Flickering Flame is a pretty good rune ward. Um, I like Plague. Plague's a pretty good rune ward. There's a lot of Nova Sorceresses that are using Obsession. Um, I haven't used it. I actually don't play a lot of Nova Sork, but um, this is this is pretty exciting for sure. Um, they've added the Haraja Cube recipes to upgrade sets. Um, that previously was only uh, viable on ladder. Now we can do that on non ladder. That's pretty good. There's some pretty nice uh, set pieces that you can mess with that are you know only exceptional bases. You can get them to you know elite bases, um, and it, it you know gives them a little bit more damage, a little bit more defense. That's you know I, I like that. I like this recipe. It's cool, um, especially if you're like if you have like a Saigon set, you know early on, and then you want to buff. You know, Saigons once you hit Nightmare and you make everything exceptional and it's uh, it's pretty cool. Sundering Charms. Adventurer, keep a keen eye towards the floor as you cut through Hell's Legion. Sundering Charms can now drop from Fallen Foes in all non-classic game modes. All right, this is awesome. This is great for um, players that don't play ladder. This is great for players that um, also play single player. Sundering Charms are now going to drop in single player game modes as well as non ladder game modes. Terror zones. Uh, to spice things up further, we have made changes to terror zones. Also, terror zones are now available in offline games. That's that's pretty great. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good for um, for solo self found people that like solo self found. If you're into the if you're into the Sunder charms, there you go. That's that's uh, that's a plus for you guys. Uh, offline terror zones will operate on a different schedule from their online counterpart but function the same otherwise remember you can now receive sundering charms as a drop in offline terror zone games too let's let's give it up for ssf right right a lot of people like ssf let's give it up for ssf okay so they made updates to some of the terrorized zones um they added Okay, so now when dark wood is terrorized, uh, underground passage is also terrorized. That's that's pretty good. That's you know that's a bigger zone. That's more that's more uh, enemies to kill. That's more drops to find. That's you know more chances at getting high runes, getting better drops. That's good. Black marsh, the hole, right? So now you have black marsh in the hole. The hole's just like a cave. Black marsh, you know, it's a place to go. You know, expand it. I mean, kind of lackluster. They're spicing it up a bit. Uh, jail and the barracks so they're adding the barracks so now whenever uh, the jail is terrorized the barracks is also terrorized uh, ancient tunnels ancient tunnels in act two is now a zone that can be terrorized um you know what a lot of these act two terror zones are some of my favorite like i love running sewers i love running stony tomb halls of the dead's pretty good i mean far away just kind of sucks right um claw viper temples okay you know the lot you know the tombs are pretty good arcane sanctuary uh sometimes you know i don't know i'm on the fence about arcane sanctuary just it just kind of sucks if with you if you don't you know if you're not if you're not teleporting around arcane sanctuary kind of sucks um and in tal Rosh's tombs you know that's probably you know top three um you know best zones right you have world stone uh chaos and and tal Rosh's tombs you know so act two act two terror zones are pretty good they're some of my favorite uh, act three, uh, they added the Great Marsh and they said fuck you to Kura Sewers. Good, good job. Good job, Blizzard. I like this. Kura uh, Sewers sucked ass. Um, Great Marsh is, you know, probably a better place to farm the Kura Sewers. The only thing you gotta be uh, weary about is the, I think, Gloams are there. So uh, they'll fuck you up. Uh, get your ground Rune Ward helmet and throw that on and then you're, you're ready to go, right? Um, Act four, no changes to act four. Uh, act five, holy shit. All right, so act five, now when bloody foothills are terrorized, also frigid highlands and abaden. That's the, the red portal uh, in frigid highlands. So that's, that will also be terrorized. Uh, glacial trail, they added the drifter cavern in glacial trail. So it's kind of like crystalline passage in frozen river, right? Whenever you would have the crystalline passage as a terror zone, the frozen river, would also be terrorized, right? Um, Ariat Plateau, Pit of Asheron, same thing. Uh, that's a red portal in Ariat Plateau. That's going to take you just a little mini area, um, little mini terrorized area, just, you know, in addition to that. Otherwise, no changes to Neelothox Temple, no changes to Ancient's Way, Nicely Cellar. 
Uh, nothing, you know, nothing different about... Ugh. Nothing different about Worldstone. Uh, quality of life updates and bug fixes. Gameplay. Auras from another player or mercenary no longer remove passive bonuses granted by the same skill, such as flickering flame resistance, um, fire auras from a mercenary overriding paladin's base resistance. Uh, f base resistant. Okay, here we go. Um, flick. Uh, such as uh, flickering flames resist fire aura from a mercenary overriding a paladin's base resist fire from their own hard points in resist fire. This also fixes an issue where paladin's blessed aim aura would overwrite the attack rating increase granted by Amazon's penetrate skill. All right, so what this means is that previously, if you would put two points uh, into... Uh, Resist fire, every two points would give you one hard point into your actual res fire resist stat, right? So if you put, you know, 10 points into resist fire, you would actually add five to your fire resist and this would put you over the 75 cap, which would allow you to, uh, you know, absorb fire damage. So previously, if your mercenary had flickering flame on, what it would do is because of the aura, it would, uh, it would, you know, there would be a bug and would overwrite that. So you'd actually lose that uh, inherent uh, plus five to your fire resist, but now it's fixed. So now, you know, you're just gonna, you know, tank even more fire damage, which is, which is great. Uh, the assassin, this is, this is probably my favorite part about, uh, patch notes right here. Um, a lot of controversy. There's a lot of controversy and, uh, you know, the PVP discords about this. A lot, this is big, right? This is big. I mean, not only for PVE, but also for PVP. This is big. Um, the assassin's trap skills now benefit from minus percent to enemy resistance All Right not plus you're not gonna get the plus to, to lightning skill damage But you're gonna get the minus enemy resistance, which you know center charms Griffin's eye, uh, you know facets you're still gonna get you know the minus enemy resistance from facets Right, so this is actually gonna make the the assassin more viable in PvE. You're not gonna be as um you're not going to be as hindered not having infinity, right? So you're going to get the Sunder Charms. You're going to plow through shit. We were Lightning Century. Death Century is going to help you out. Um, this, What this means for PvP players is now if you're playing an Assassin and they're wearing Griffin's Eye, uh, they can, you know, they can, you know, they can hit you a lot harder than they used to if, if you know, if you're breaking your, uh, your, your Absorb, right? So if you're wearing, uh, you know, a Low Wisp or if you're wearing a T-Gods, um, and if you don't have, uh, I believe now it's uh, like 200 with a low wisp or like 205 with T-Gods, right? If, if you don't hit that, um, that break point in minus resistances, then it's, your resists are going to drop and you're going to get plowed by traps, right? So you, now for your PvP guys, you're going to want to make sure that if you're dueling a sin um, after this patch, Right, because this is the patch is universal, right? So this is this is going to be affected not only on ladder, but this is going to be affected throughout the entire game. Um, you're going to need to you know stack about. I think it, you're going to need to stack 20% more lightning res, right? Add add an extra 20 just so now if it, if you have an assassin that has Griffin's Eye and they break your they break your lightning resist because of that, you know that's you know, it's bad news. It's bad news, bud. It's bad news. Uh, fix an issue where missiles created from martial arts charge up skills would not gain the benefit percent elemental skill modifiers all right they probably found that out when they were uh you know adding that to mosaic you now that goes hand in hand with mosaic and uh, the elemental skill buffs that that gives um amazon um fuck amazon's we're just gonna skip amazon's sorceress um Cold mastery is now applied at one fifth effectiveness after an immunity is broken. So they're just giving uh, <laughs> cold mastery, you know, the nerf. They're fucking, they're fucking nerfing the shit at cold mastery now. You can't just be a bliss orc and uh, throw on a cold thunder charm and just literally shit on everything in the entire game uh, like you could last season. So that's, you know, that's pretty good. You know, Blizzard, Blizzard Sorceress was already, you know. N you know, art was you know arguably the number one best meta build um, for starting for starting ladder and you know accumulating wealth and just you know ripping through shit. You know now they're you know, bring that back, make it a little more you know fair 
you know, to other classes, right? Because the Blizzard of Sorcerers was already, you know, best class in the game. So there's, they're bringing that back. Um, you know, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of controversy about that. Um, you know, people talking about that, you know, when Season 2 was starting and Sunder Charms were starting. So, oh, that's ridiculous. And, you know, fuck this bullshit and fucking Blizzard's Ark and blah, you know, whatever. Fuck, you know. So they fixed it. Good on them. Uh, Druid fixed an underlying issue that caused the Druid's Shockwave skill uh, to do an unintended amount of damage. Um, we wanted to implement targeted changes and buffs for the druid instead of having a particular druid uh, build be strong because of a bug. Well, fuck you! You just ruined you just ruined LLD for every every shockwave druid. Uh, this is a bad move. Uh, I think it needs to be reversed, and I think um, I think you should let the LLDers have fun with their shockwave druids. Terror zones fix terrorized treasure classes for certain unique monsters and bosses. Uh, fix an issue when act bosses quest treasure class which sometimes be used instead of the terrorized treasure class that's for um, That's like quest bugging and Dariel, right? Um, fix an issue when current terrorized zone is not properly marked in the waypoint menu while using legacy graphics Hmm. I, I, don't, I don't use legacy graphics. I mean, maybe if I fuck around, you know now and then but I didn't even know that was a thing um, fix an issue. Tra fix an issue with translations that appear when the pit is uh, current terrorized zone. Uh, controller. Oh, oh. All right. This is pretty good. Right here. Listen up, you console players. This is good. This is good stuff for you. You're gonna like this. Fixed an issue where skills granted by charges on a character's alternate slot weapon would have their bound hotkeys unusable when loading into the game. So pretty much, if, if you're using like a hard yoke, right, and you bind um, Oak Sage. You know to your to your controller let's say you're doing like you know whatever l2 circle is your is your oak sage um every time you leave a game and then you enter a new game you have to remap uh that oak sage and it's just a pain in the fucking ass right so this is great i love this um all you all you people that use controller you should be fucking doing backflips right now all right this is great uh fix an issue where the loot cube oh my god i love this i actually i complained about this fucking months ago on reddit um and like there was a minor fix but this is it was fucking bullshit i mean this is great fix an issue where the loot cube skill would not function if bound to the shared interaction button that meant that if you put loot the cube on x which is like a shared interaction button which is you know it's attack it's pick shit up whatever blah blah, blah talk whatever you interact with npcs um it wouldn't fucking work now it does now it's great i'm gonna fucking have loot the cube on uh x probably uh the rest of my life uh, let me see general, you know fixed an issue when pressing hotkey to open inventory while loading into the game Because the inventory UI to appear empty fixed an issue or shared stash could exceed memory limit which caused items in the player's inventory stash uh, When in the player's inventory or stash to be deleted um, This is fucking awesome. We're not fucking losing all our fucking Crafts right you craft a fuck ton of rings, you know, we got some GG rings some people lost like some pretty good shit This is great. This also um uh, it might be a fix to duping too because I know that Cooley had you know mentioned in his video about you know overloading your stash um, and causing uh, what is it causing the game to not uh, save its game files quick enough to to recognize that you had deleted you know certain items then you join a game then you had the whole duped enigma thing that was going on for a little bit um, this is this seems like it could be a fix for that as well Fix an issue where the tooltip on the lobby's season dropdown would show an inaccurate date. All right, yeah, this is just some, uh, you know, minor UI shit. Doesn't really matter. Modding, um, anyone on single player that mods, you know, they fix some shit for you. I don't mod. I don't know anything about modding. I'm not that cool. Um, for anyone who does mod, I hope this is some, um, some pretty good changes for you guys. Um, you know, mod it up. Have fun. Go fucking crazy. Thanks for stopping by. Please, you know, drop some comments. Let me know. Uh, let me know what class you, uh, you're going to start off with in season three. Let me know if you like the changes to the rune wards. Let me know um, if you like the changes to to traps, to assassin traps. I think that's my favorite thing so far. That and the controller, uh, the controller shit. You know, let me know. Thanks for stopping by. Stay nuts.